Hello, you beautiful and handsome commanders. I know what you're here for and I'll spare you the intro and let's get right into it. In terms of meta pulling and damage, with the current units out right now and the current content, Emilia might see some occasional use in some situations, but she's not the main option in a lot of content for PvE. But if you're looking for PvP, then she is definitely good for it and should be a pull. However, this is not taking into account future units and contents that we do not know. So take this as a sign that you have been warned if somehow she'll be more useful in the future. More specifically, if rocket launchers become more useful in the future with future content, then we'll see better use of her. And because of this, on top of the fact that she is a limited collab unit, I would at least pull one copy of her. Through and through, her performance fits her archetype of rocket launcher. If you have been listening to my other talks lately with topics touching on rocket launchers, the main issue with rocket launcher is specifically because they are doing what rocket launchers should be doing. Let me explain. As you know, rocket launcher's advantage is its significantly larger area of effect damage. But due to this, their single target damage is taken into account and balanced around. To give an idea how she stacks up against other meta units, here's a little bit of comparison with consistent supports across the board. I compared her with top meta units right now like Snow White, Maxwell, Red Hood, and Alice. I also included A2 as well as she's the main relevant rocket launcher right now. This might seem unfair considering how she's a rocket launcher, but you have to keep in mind that all these units are being used in pretty much all endgame relevant content right now. Raids, campaign, and everything else including bosses with many parts and other content where rocket launchers are supposed to shine. These units are also the ones with potential to perform better when there's multiple parts involved with their peers. If we're just looking at rocket launcher performance, she's better than A2 with all the investment set up. However, despite being quite possibly the best rocket launcher right now, they still don't stand a chance compared to the top meta units right now. This is not counting Scarlet Black Shadow by the way, which quite frankly speaking acts more like a sniper with AoE skill and doesn't really hit additional boss parts. Side note, I do feel like Scarlet Black Shadow was intentionally made as a rocket launcher so that she doesn't get that range bonus effect that snipers have. But I digress. When we're starting to compare Emilia to Snow White, Maxwell, Red Hood, and Alice, there's a gap happening when they're just hitting one extra part. She can catch up to them if her damage hits about two more extra parts than them. But if the Pierce units somehow hit two parts plus the body, Emilia does have a hard time catching up. However, in practicality, most peer situations actually only really hit the main body and one additional part. So in situations where Emilia could win is when she hits the main body and two parts or more consistently. The keyword I'd like to emphasize here is consistently. On paper, rocket launchers are excellent. You see many enemies or parts and then you deal tons of damage. The issue stems from the fact that the content right now aren't set up to make rocket launchers shine, especially in late game. For mid-game players, you will actually find some use for rocket launchers. Let me further clarify these statements. Right now in the game, the main content involves Union Raid, Solo Raid, Cope Rankings, Campaign Hard Mode, and even Overclock Simulation. There's Stripe Drawer, which is basically similar to Campaign, and then there's also PvP. Now these contents are pretty much available to all types of players, regardless if you're a relatively new player of about one month or below, and even if you're a late game player who has been playing since day one. The rocket launcher problem appears from how much progress you are as a player. By the way, before I keep going on further, I consider the people to be around mid game if they're around level 200 to 300, below it are newer players and after it are late game players. And late game players could be even further divided in my point of view. There's some late game players who have just barely built 3 teams for Union Raid and then there's some who have built properly 5 teams for Solar Raid already. Having done so many account reviews on stream, I can definitely tell a person's general progress and advice accordingly. In about half a year more, I could see more people being in the latemost game that I'm talking about right now. With also the addition of simulation overclock, people's progress should be a bit faster now in terms of upgrading units. For Union Raid, the level's not synced and Shift Up has not made the content harder. And that's because they're taking into account newer players. But because of this, the boss parts and the mechanics are relatively easy to handle at the higher level you are. 
the parts are easily destroyed within seconds and becomes not relevant for the rest of the fight. This causes rocket launchers to lose their advantage the moment the parts are destroyed as many bosses don't respawn the parts that often or have a limited HP. For solo raid, this is where players will likely see some use for Emilia. This is going to depend on boss to boss situation, but since the level is synced here, there's a lot more importance on cores, skill investments, and overload lines. The bosses are set up not to be too impossible for mid game players, but since mid game players don't have a lot of investment on the top units, rocket launchers could see some use taking advantage of the high HP parts. For late game players, I could see them opting out of Emilia should there be better Pierce units to come out. The reason to that is due to many people with high investment of the other stronger units with less parts reliance situation, they're more likely to get more copies or have higher skill investment and overload min maxing to those units instead, for example, Red Hood or Alice. And for the players in late game, they usually have a properly built and skilled up team that can destroy the solar raid boss parts with relative ease. Or at the very least, there will be many gaps in the fight where there's no parts to hit and causing Rocket Launcher to lose DPS. So for these late most game players, Rocket Launchers tend to end up losing DPS because there's no more parts to hit. This is why I mentioned it's going to be on a boss to boss situation and also it's going to vary usage depending on the stage of the game of a player you are. If boss has unlimited parts of HP pool or if the boss has constantly respawning parts and there's little downtime to situations without parts, then Emilia will see some use. Co-op has a similar regards to Solar Raid and Union Raid. And even then, you could just be a supporting role and use support units and leave it to the Emilia's simp that to have Core 7 of her. Historically though, Co-op tend to have weaker parts HP so she'll likely see less use as well. And typically, Snow White Burst is more meta on it for overcapping the damage where you deal more damage than what the boss's HP is so that you can gain more points. For Tribe Tower and Campaign, I could see some use of Emilia if the chapter is water weak oriented. A2 has seen some use in Campaign for some people so Emilia is not to completely discount. It's just that in Campaign there's many other options as well that have performed historically better and if you look at the top end players usage right now, they have been using the staple campaign units like Modernia, Scarlet, Alice, Redrood, and even Snow White. If you don't have these higher priority DPSs, I could see a spot for Amelia in this content. However, otherwise I think people are better off using the high priority Pierce units as they typically have higher focus damage which do come out very useful especially when you are in a 30-40% to 40 CP deficit. Rocket launchers have weaker focus damage which is sometimes causing issues with campaign as you cannot kill the high priority targets enough. And as someone who is focused on these high CP deficit campaign, I can tell you that it is not common for us to use these rocket launchers on campaign in the late game. Now for PvP, I do dabble in this especially when I do my account reviews. She's definitely high up there and she does have good energy generation. In PvP, having high energy generation is very important as typically the one who controls the burst will be the winner. With Amelia also, her burst has delay so she can use to counter Noah in PvP which has a 3 second invulnerability. She does act as a team wide burst, AoE and can wipe out the enemy. And then finally we have our recent simulation overclock. This content is pretty flexible and where we could see her be picked would be for people challenging ratio 50. But for ratio 50, typically they force you into using a single element and at least with the two content that we have out already in season 1 and season 2. And even if water requirement do come out of simulation overclock, I think it will be doable even without Emilio. If I have to give priority for each type of content, Emilio will be at these. I would give her a low priority on Union Raid, low on co-op, low on simulation overclock, around low to medium in campaign and tower, and medium in solo raid, and high in PvP. Alright, so we broke down where Amelia stands right now. Let's say you did pull her and decide to invest in her and get to know her more. Let's get right into this. Let's talk about Amelia's skills. Her skill 1 is pretty straightforward. It increases her charge speed and it also increases her charge damage based on how much total ammo she has. The thing is, this skill scales pretty bad in comparison to her other skills. Between level 1 to level 10 of skill 1, you're looking at around 5-8% to damage increase. 
still a good chunk of damage increase but when we're leveling up so many units and also considering her overall content priority it's hard to justify investing a lot of resources to this skill i would look into making this around level 4 to 7 to save resources more level is good of course so it'll be up to you to invest on this skill further her skill 2 is her bread and butter this pretty much is just straight up bonus damage to her final damage and this is pretty much including damage done to parts as well from level 1 to level 10 we're looking at around 14 percent damage increase when looking into using her maxing this skill is highly recommended Moving on to her burst skill. This one is very peculiar as its performance will completely depend on the units that we are using. In particular, upgrading the burst does have the capability at around 7 to 12% more DPS. Due to how she has a burst that can be within the duration of a high profile buff like litter and novel, the value of her burst increases greatly when using buffers like these with short but high value buffs. However, when using low value 10 second buffs, the damage increase from upgrading this burst is lower which will explain the range of upgrading this skill. Without units like Litter or Novel that are high value short duration buff bursters, you could actually see less importance to her burst. In fact, if you're not benefiting from the expanded explosion range from her burst, you're not really losing too much damage. For example, having Litter and Novel, the damage difference of her bursting and not bursting can make a difference of between 20 to 30% damage difference. But let's say you did use D and Rem, the damage difference between her bursting and not bursting is only about 10% damage difference. This could make you change your priority on bursting if, for example, you have 3 burst trees and another unit has better burst value than Emilia, for example, Alice or Maxwell. This is just a food for thought, especially if you're not making good use of the benefit of the extra range from her burst. Also when using this burst, there is a trick where you can pre-charge before she starts her burst and this will allow you to reach the burst faster. This is due to the fact that the way her burst works isn't really changing her weapon like say Snow White or Maxwell, but instead giving her charge damage buff which just affects the maximum charge bar. Doing a pre-charging with the Milia can actually shave off an extra second reaching her max burst and actually can give you an overall about 3% damage increase when doing so. With all this explained, my recommendation for skill investment in Emilia is about 4 on skill 1, 7 on skill 2, and between 4 to 7 for budget. And my recommendation would be between 4 to 7 for skill 1, and level 10 on skill 2, and level 7 on burst. For competitive people, I could see them going with level 7 skill 1, level 10 skill 2, and level 10 burst. And I guess for Sims is going to be 10, 10, 10. I don't see an issue in particular if you have plenty of resources. For Overload, aside from the very high priority of elemental damage and attack, the third line is primarily two stats in particular. I've tried to do some simulation on what would end up being the best for her and found that the ratio of two charge speed and two lines of max ammo give her a proper flexibility across different teams. There was this one situation where I did find that one ammo and three charge speed work out and that was with Alice. But overall, I would look into having between one to two max ammo lines and two to three charge speed lines. Charge damage, critical rate, and critical damage are some things that I would be settling with as well as the third line, but the priority would be at least one to two max ammo. As a side note, when you only have one max ammo, I would try to make sure you have at least plus 4 from it, which will equal to total of 10 ammo, which will work out nicely with Bastion. Speaking of which, with regards to Q, Bastion is slightly better than Resilience, so that is her main option. There was a question about Wingman, but unfortunately, Wingman provides one ammo too short if it only provides an extra one more ammo from what it is providing right now. It will be better than Bastion, but unfortunately, since that is not the case, Bastion does come out better. Now finally for teams. Emilia is a pretty straightforward in terms of team building and is pretty much a standard DPS. There are some units that do make her way better than others though. In particular, attack buffers are pretty good on her because she doesn't have attack buffs on her own. Litter is the best burst one buffer. Litter has an insane attack buff that she can stay with Emilia's burst so that Emilia's burst gets the full benefit of Litter's 5 second buffs. And on top of that, Litter also has additional max ammo bonus. 
30 is a millisecond burst 1 option given the nature of the parts buff and also on top of being in the same element. The only issue with this is typically Dorothy wants ammo reduction, meanwhile Amelia wants ammo increase. But that is not a major issue if you have Dorothy without Privity. You'll still experience some cooldown reduction but just not as efficient as when having Privity. Aside from that, the additional other options would be Volume, you have Miranda, and you have D, and then you have Sakura as the other meta burst 1 buffers. For burst 2, there's two major buffers with Amelia. One is Novel who has an insane 5 second debuff, and Amelia can have her burst within Novel's burst duration. And the other one is the obvious Rem who provides a mixture of damage, healing, and buffs. This is also where the other duos come in with Tianaga and Blanc and Noir as usual as well. And finally, we have our standard burst 3 units. Good DPS support that go along with her are Maxwell, we have Alice and Ludmilla, and also Helm for healer. Typically, when there is a main DPS rocket launcher, it's often unnecessary to have more than one because usually there is one single rocket launcher that handles all the rest of the boss parts. But with the inclusion of Rem, it's likely possible we put in two highly valued rocket launchers together to form a team 5 for solo raid. Most notably, we have A2 and Scarlet Black Shadow as options to go together with Emilia and Rem. As mentioned, you can fit her in any team and will do relatively fine. The main thing to look out for is that she does need some attack buffer so that will help her out more. Emilia as a unit doesn't change much into the meta. She fits a niche role of rocket launchers which currently has flaws in the available content out right now as I have pointed out earlier. I think in the future shift up can make content that can make rocket launchers shine more. Either that or it'll be a constant meme for us every time shift up launches a rocket launcher. The biggest use right now for rocket launcher is PvP and that is due to their high energy generation rate but even that isn't really consistent because it depends on the type of rocket launcher they are. Overall due to Emilia being a limited collab unit and water rocket launcher I definitely recommend to pick up at least one because we don't know if she will ever come back. The only other rocket launcher right now is Vesti and right now we don't even have news of her getting a rework with Treasure and even then Vesti's usage is different compared to Emilia as Vesti is used more for her full burst time reduction which will make other DPS burster burst more often. In any case what do you guys think about Emilia? Did you pull for her or are you still skipping her? What's your reason? Let me know in the comments down below or for left side, right side, whichever YouTube decided to make it look like for you as I'm curious what everyone else's thoughts are. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I do stream often in my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash skyjlv so make sure to come and join and follow that channel as well. I do stream sometimes simultaneous on streams on YouTube but I set my YouTube streams to be a little bit more event or new content based so when just hanging out and chilling I am available in Twitch. And for those that want to do account reviews, we have a point system set up where I can review your account and provide advice. The points are easily obtained simply via watching the channel and it's completely free. You can check out my other character guide as well on the channel or you can check out this other video of a fun account review. Anyways, that's about it for me for now and I'll see you guys next time.